Hello and welcome to another Should You Buy, and this one we're going to look at the new clan heroes that were just announced today. Now, what we don't need to do is look at their hitboxes and that kind of stuff as we already have them. We have these mechs and we can go play on them right now. The only thing that we need to really worry about is the omnipods for these mechs. Are they game breaking? Are they going to change the chassis that they're on? Let's find out. But first, let's look at the prices. Head on down here. Uh, these are for the Wave 1 Clan Mix. The Clan Mix that have been in the game for the longest. The Kit Fox, Storm Crow, Timberwolf, Warhawk, Adder, Nova, Summoner, Direwolf. And they're going with a 10, 15, 20, 25 for the cost of the heroes. Increasing with the weight class. And these uh, prices are pretty nice comparatively uh, I'll go through some um, cost comparisons at the end of this but uh, ten dollars with a sea build boosted hero and a mech bay is actually a really good deal uh, so it might be useful to pick up a mech through this system just for the fact that it is a deal in that sense but continuing down we can see all of the mechs there and all of the different pods here now what i have done is i've gone off to my spreadsheet warrior like i always do and i have created a sheet to allow us to visualize the different variants and what they have available for them so these are the omnipods and the different hard points that they have um, negating ams points because uh, those don't actively help you kill your opponent which is what most people are thinking about but these are for the eight chassis that we have going on here and let's go through them one by one. I was thinking I was going to make a separate video for each weight class or something like that, but I think I can get them all done at one time. First off, Kit Fox. We have the hero here. A ballistic in the left arm. Nothing special. Energy in the left and right torso. Two energy. This is big for the Kit Fox. This is a serious, serious improvement to the Kit Fox's ability to carry a decent payload. Because in the past, the only real payload that the Kit Fox would take would be a C right arm, because it wants that ECM, so it can have the ability to hide, and maybe the S side torsos for some machine guns, and then a C left arm for um, another two, say, medium lasers, and another two machine guns or something. Like, they weren't able to make very many amazing builds on the kit fox because of a lack of hard points specifically in the torsos Just look everything is empty comparatively but now two energy in each side torso is big the mech can now get eight energy hard points with prime left arm hero left torso hero right torso and s right arm or you can have the ecm right arm from the charlie variant and have seven energy and ECM. That's great. It's just, and here comes the first conundrum of these heroes. And the only one where this really is like, you have to think about it. The hero will most doubtably have the most useful Omnipods out of all of the Kit Foxes. You can make a better Kit Fox on the hero than you can with any of the other variants that you can get for Seabells. Unfortunately, and we're going to pop over to this other tab here, and I got to find it again because I was getting the MC prices there. We zoom in for a moment. This question, and it, and it sucks. How do the Omnipods for these Clan Hero Mechs work? Will you be able to buy these Omnipods in the Mech Lab? Hero Omnipods cannot be purchased separately from the Hero Mech. To acquire Hero Omnipods for use with other variants of that chassis, you must own an instance of the Hero Mech to remove and use its pods elsewhere. So, if you buy a Hero Omni Mech, you buy that Kit Fox Omni Mech, you are only ever going to have one set of side torsos from it. You're never going to be able to get a set of side torsos for the hero and oh because you bought the package a long time ago a set of side torsos for your prime your prime invasion variant i'm never going to be able to have 
that design on both of those mechs and maybe to you know because i want to just cycle through them and play the same mech but i want to get into my games fast go in fight die okay move on next mech drop into the similar thing and go again you would have to buy another hero to get those omnipods and that sucks i really really wish and it would make a, a lot of things better is that they made it so that you could buy the omnipods that were on the hero for C bills, but of course they don't give you any uh, C bill bonus. That's always tied to the CT, just like the prime invasion variants we have now. Mm, it's it's troublesome, but that's the thing. That's the only bad part about these side torsos here, is that you're only ever going to be able to use them on that single mech. So you only your hero will have them equipped, because why would you take them off the hero to put them on another mech? Like it just it seems weird. But anyway, moving on from the Kit Fox, we have the Adder. Hero here, nothing special. One energy. Ballistic in the side torsos, okay. Center torso energy, that's very consistent. Ballistic in the side torso, and then arm energy. So, this one's interesting in that sense. Uh, not really game breaking or anything like that, but. Like I put out a video recently, one of the builds you can do on the adder is the WX2s. Now you can scroll that into the side torsos instead. Maybe uh, bring down the armor on the arms in order to get some extra tonnage for it. Use a single, uh, maybe I can, some kind of laser in the center torso, medium laser, and you're good, sort of thing. Uh, so, it, so, just some build optimization. Not really a OP OP or anything like that. But, yeah, just a little bit of build optimization for the adder. If you want to do, say, one side torso ballistic and the Ultra 10, uh, a few smalls, I believe the build is, um, you can do that, but it's not in the arm anymore. So it's a little bit harder to kill in that sense because it's not hanging out there on the arm. And, uh, yeah, you can strip arms to get some tonnage back and maybe even... I don't know if it would be possible if you stripped enough out of the arms and stuff like that. Could you do two Ultra 5s? I don't know. I'd have to do the numbers on that. But maybe it would make it so that the Adder could do uh, one or two unique builds because of it, but nothing game-breaking comparatively. Moving down to the Nova, um, this won't be really much of a game-breaking or anything like that. Uh, two missiles in the left arm. Uh, two energies in the left torso, nothing in the center, two ballistic in the right torso, and three energy in the right arm. So first off, energy in the right arm doesn't matter. You three, six, you know, the Omnipods already exist, they have more than that. Same here for the right torso, there's already two ballistics in that side, there's nothing in the CTs. Uh, left torso, you're getting one more energy hard point, which may raises the max that the mech can do, but it didn't really matter in the end because you can already do 13 so uh, 14 actually uh, with 12 in the arms and then one on each side so now you can do 15 energy woohoo it's like that's already too hot so there's two side torso energy is interesting but not really different or anything and then two missiles unfortunately just not enough missile hard points around the nova in order to make it ever a SRM carrier so overall the hero here not really spectacular in any kind of sense but uh, a lot of the heroes besides the kit fox are like that for these and more or less you're just getting them for that C build bonus Stormcrow left arm ballistic nothing in the left torso and center right torso one energy nothing uh, new here but right arm the first ballistic in the right arm for the Stormcrow. Now, the, basically, if you're going to get the Stormcrow hero, it's for a little bit of optimization. Say you want to run a right side mounted ballistic, because that's something I always found in the Stormcrow to be a little bit jarring, is that I'd always run right mounted designs on majority of my mechs, well, probably like 80% of them. Uh, having this left mounted only with the B and the C left arms made it a little bit uh, jarring when I had to go between my two variants for uh, my Stormcrows. So 
if you can put that into the right arm, that's going to be kind of nice because then you can do the right mounted stuff. Then you can do the right torso, head, and left torso, and then strip the left arm and create your right uh, right sided ballistic build. So yeah, a little bit of optimization, nothing OP. You can run the exact same build that you can do on any of the Storm Crows on the hero and vice versa. So if you just want right sided uh, flavor to it. Now, Summoner, and I've included the F and the M here that are the reward variants, just to show that if you're getting the reward variants, what that means to you, and if you're not getting the reward variants, what that means to you. So, Hero, two ballistics in the left arm. That's, that's new, that's the first time we've had two ballistics there, but uh, unfortunately, the mech is most likely not going to have enough tonnage because it's a Summoner. It's like, it's not a boating ballistics kind of mech so two ballistics don't really do much for it it's nice to have it you can probably do a more one-sided build but again it's a summoner it doesn't have much uh, weight to play with left torso energy though so if you're not getting the summoner M from the clan package like for the, uh, the, the top tier clan reward this is maybe a way for you to get an energy in the side torso now, it doesn't have the energy in the other side torso like the Summoner F does, but that makes you able to take five. With the uh, Hero left torso, Summoner D left arm, and Summoner D or Summoner C right arm. And so, you could do a little bit better laser bomb builds with these. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. You can do like a, a Goss bomb, maybe like a Goss rifle and enough uh, medium lasers, uh, a little bit better because you have that torso mounted one you can go right torso a ballistic do five medium lasers a little bit of um, this customization and optimization with the hero but nothing big nothing crazy uh, all the other hard points for that hero are lackluster moving on to the timberwolf now the hero has a ballistic in the left arm which is new that's cool so it allowed the timberwolf to boat four ballistics now if it wanted to one in each arm and one in each torso so if you ever wanted to do a four uac two build on a timberwolf or four i think can it fit four uac fives probably not um, but maybe two twos and two fives i don't know you'd have to experiment with your uh, your tonnage but you can do four ballistics on the timberwolf now if you get that hero with its left arm uh, left torso has an energy and a missile which is uh, quite nice and the right torso energy and missile right arm two energy nothing new again nothing new it's all been done here before the only really cool thing is that left arm a ballistic but again, it's not game breaking, it's just a little bit of extra optimization or uh, flavor for that mech. Warhawk, hero, has got three energy in the left arm, which is which is new. It's the uh, plus one to anything we've seen before. Uh, we'll see if it has a lower arm actuator or not. We have that information. Uh, oh god, now that I've zoomed in here, it's going to be really difficult. Uh, Warhawk with the left arm only the upper arm actuator so no it is not going to be able to move left or right but i believe the bravo if i'm not mistaken has the ability to so you can mix the have that little bit of mobility with the bravo right arm and you could have six energy in your arms uh seventh in your center torso if you're a warhawk charlie so interesting a little bit more energy hard points a little bit better laser vom if you want to do it that way but uh, nothing in the side torso here uh nothing in the ct a single missile on the side torso but that's nothing compared to the the b or the a and then two ballistics in the right arm which is interesting Maybe you can do a little bit of a triple UAC design with the left arm uh, one ballistic and the right arm two ballistic and then a center torso energy weapon of some kind. Might be interesting. Might see what uh, builds can do on there, but uh, nothing game breaking. Comparatively, the Warhawk is a 
a little bit weaker than the other 85 tonners you have available to you and uh, most likely will be weaker than the uh, Marauder 2C when it does eventually come out. So again, the hero is different but not overpowered in that sense. The Direwolf, interestingly, two ballistic in the arm, two ballistic in the other arm, so this will be mean that the Direwolf can do eight ballistic. Two in each arm with the hero, and then two in each torso with the bravo. So, if you ever wanted to do... God, what is that? Octa AC2s. Have fun. So, I, I want to see that. Somebody do that with the chain fire macro. It would be absolutely amazing. But that's basically the thing. You're maybe going to have a little bit better sort of one-sided dire wolves because they can put four UX or four guns all on one side with one arm and one torso. But uh, the other uh, Omnipods here are nothing special. Two energy, okay. No, one missile, okay. Uh, two energy, okay. N nothing, nothing interesting here. So... That's the Direwolf. You'll be able to do a little bit of optimization with those left and right si side builds if you wanted to do mass ballistics, but stick it all over on one side. But otherwise, uh, yeah, that's that for the Direwolf. And I wanted to do a quick comparison here for the different mechs, their prices that they've been listed for their MC, which, uh, let me zoom out a little bit here, and they are right here the the prices and they're going to be out in may 20 uh, may 16th 2017 may oh wow i feel like those should be released a lot sooner than may because that's uh several months to wait for a mc variant of it if people wanted to buy it that method why not just let them because it's actually more expensive to buy it through mc than it is to buy it through the store value because the store value uh, comes with a mech bay. So if we look up here, we can see that mech bay has come with each one of these mechs. So what I've done is I've taken that MC value that they listed, I've taken the mech bay value for 300 MC, assuming no sales, and gotten the total value of the amount of MC that is. Now, using this ratio here, and you can change this, it goes from the best of 250 on a normal day to up to uh, 300 if you get it on like a 20% MC boost, or down to a 180 at the worst time. But it'll change the formulas here, 250, there we go. Total amount of MC that this is costing you to buy both the hero and the mech bay, and that how much that is approximately based on this ratio. So we can see buying the Kit Fox is actually going to cost you twelve and a half dollars to purchase it outside of the store at regular prices, and this is assuming the best MC ratio. So it's actually more beneficial in that sense to buy it from the store in here. So if you're going to get these heroes, unless there is a 30% sale on the hero, in which case these basically become equal, that is the only time you're going to want to buy them through there. So the prices we're seeing on this store are actually about 30% off normal. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at these and whether or not you want to purchase them. Getting them through here is like they're on sale. It's hard to see it unless you went and made this and dug into the numbers, but it's there. But anyway, in terms of just overall, they're they're fine. Uh, there's no really no problems of pay to win in any of these. And now I'll say any of them, but you're gonna say, what about that Kit Fox? It's not going to be the most powerful light, obviously. It's a kit fox. It's it's like a little blimp that's easy to shoot and is slow. Giving it four more usable hard points isn't always isn't all of a sudden going to make it the best light. It's still going to be outclassed by Arctic Cheetahs and stuff like that. But but it is going to be the best kit fox, and that annoys me a little. 
if it was just in a vacuum of just Kit Fox versus Kit Fox, it would win every single time because it would have access to those side torsos. Well, not win every single time, depend on player skill and build loadout and all that kind of stuff, but it would be having the most ability to be designed. A person who paid $10 for the mech and a person who just put in their C-bills, which is slightly annoying. I really wish that they would go for this Omnipod thing and make it so you can purchase the Hero Mech's Omnipods. Of course, not having any of the C-bill bonus variant stuff attached to it, but just get those hard points out there because this is actually going to be a decent buff for the kit fox it's going to be not shit it's going to be not great but it's going to be not shit so uh, i really wish that these were available but oh well in general buy them if you like the chassis you have all of them available for you to play right now if you like your adder or if you like your nova and if you like your storm crow and you never got around to purchasing a package that had the invasion variant and you just bought them through c bills through playing it's not a bad choice if you want a hero that will be able to use the omnipods that you already have and uh, give you a little bit extra c bills playing a mech that you enjoy already and that will be easy for you to master considering you're already done mastering the other variants so we just gxp it up on the first day and bam you're good to go but anyway that'll be it for this should you buy thanks for watching and good hunting